The 2018 Division III Championship Series has been set. Two teams from the great state of Texas will be battling out in a best of three game series for the 2018 Division III Baseball National Championship. Those teams were decided today, and if we haven't already uh, spoiled that for you, UT Tyler advanced defeating Randolph Macon, and Texas Lutheran moves into the championship round by defeating Concordia Chicago. I'm Pat Coleman of D3Baseball.com. This is Jim Dixon, the founder, managing editor, and all of those other things, the guy who runs D3Baseball.com. But uh, Jim, First of all, always thankful to have just two games rather than four here at Appleton. Thankful to have great weather once again and uh, two really good baseball games. Uh, Tyler wins 8-6 to six and TLU wins 5-4. to four. This probably was the best day of baseball that we've had. Um, and it even started with a slight weather delay. We started about 50 minutes late. Um, we had some rain showers that crept through. So it was um, good to see some. the grass got green and the, um, it cooled the heat down a little bit as well. Sure did, uh, but the uh, and the pitchers came out and uh, put some of the heat on, especially in the first few innings in our first game, starting with the uh, UT Tyler Randolph Macon game. Uh, you know, obviously we're at the point, Jim, where we're pretty deep into the tournament and we're deep into teams pitching staffs. Uh, but uh, Nate Immig uh, for UT Tyler, Cullen Moore for Randolph Macon, come out and throw a combined. Uh, the first three innings, each of them combined for a total of one run. Uh, a lot of things in that the first couple of first time or so through the order, some success, but then things started to unravel a little bit. Um, this was the game of the two out hit. Um, I think that of the 14 runs that were scored, 12 of them were scored with two outs. So um, the team that won was the team that got the, um, the clutch hit. They did, and uh, it was UT Tyler with a big six-run inning in the fifth. I uh, could really go through, I don't know, just turn around and go to the uh, the play-by-play the -play of this fifth inning is a significant portion of the uh, bottom corner here. Uh, but, you know, think about the, the big Blake Maddox home run, uh, which comes with two outs. Often that's enough of a, you know, a, a home run doesn't always start a rally, right? Uh, extra base hits might start rallies, and a home run might end it. Nope, nope, not the case. Uh, Sanchez had a uh, had a hit, hit by pitch, followed a walk, uh, then a hit by pitch to uh, bring a run home. It was a uh, it was a you know a, a part of uh, where where are the wheels falling off of falling off of the train, falling off of the wagon. Things kind of fell apart a little bit for the Yellow Jackets. Um, the Bulldogs need or the um, the Texas Tyler Patriots they needed a spark and they found it off the bat of um, Maddox um, with that home run. And then they just got to a pitcher that just had lost a little bit. Coach went out there, left him in um, probably one or two batters too long. Um, came, found a reliever who um, wasn't able to sit there and check any of the damage. Finally found somebody who can get the outs. But by then, the game was settled. Yeah, Cullen Moore goes the first four and two thirds, gives up five runs, all of them earned. Uh, Tyler Dunn came on, could not retire a batter. Uh, Tommy Barron finally got them out of that inning. And then they got good relief down the stretch, but by then the damage had been done. Now, however, Randolph Macon did scratch back into this game, made it interesting at the end. Chris Tadalka came out of the pen and gave three innings of great relief. And then, um, you know, very similarly, uh, uh, Coach, of, uh, Coach Porsche of UT Tyler said maybe he kept his guy in a little bit too long, thought he, uh, in retrospect, should have gone out and not let him start the eighth inning. They scratched together two runs off of him, but then Alexander Mazzotto made a great finishing statement on that game. He really did. Um, three strikeouts to end the game, and the, bull and, um, the Yellow Jackets were done. Uh, Coach talked after the game about uh, guys like Stadolka and Mazzotto, both guys who were in the uh, running for the closer position for that team during the course of the season. Both of them come up big today. Stadolka with the win. He improves to 2-1 and one, and the first save on the season for Mizzoto. So UT Tyler improves to 38-18. and 18. They come back tomorrow. They'll play a couple of games against Texas Lutheran, which defeated Concordia Chicago by the score of 5-4. to four. The uh, two big stories in this game, Jim, first of all, Mike Formella comes back out to make the start today after he gets knocked around a little bit on Sunday night, has pitched a lot again as previously, as in previous years, over the course of this tournament. Uh, but then it was the big shot off of the bat of Tyler Colley, off of Cody Cavallero in the eighth that ended up deciding this game. Um, Coach Stosky was looking for um, lightning in a bottle. He got it in the regionals when he put Formella in for a full nine innings. Um, and you could tell that that was what he wanted today. And he did not quite get it, uh, but uh, especially the first four innings, uh, fantastic. Uh, Formella got touched up for three runs in the fifth. 
Uh, they reached him for another run in the sixth, and then they tried to patch it together at the end. Uh, I thought Caballero, Caballero, they brought him in. He was a lefty. Um, you know, Coach Burnett of TLU said if you had seen the way that TLU batted against uh, Lamb, the lefty of Swarthmore yesterday, you could understand why they would come back with a lefty. And he had, uh, you know, some moments of brilliance, but uh, one moment of a baseball that I think is still traveling. Collie's shot was a no-doubter for a no-doubter. There was no doubt. And um, he was looking for a pitch to hit, and he certainly found one right in his zone. And I it's still rolling out there somewhere. <laughs> I think so. 12 hits for TLU. Uh, nobody with more than two. Everybody up and down the lineup got at least one hit for the Bulldogs as they improved to 42 and 10. Uh, I want to also talk about uh, Dylan Durgach, who came in after a one day's rest, uh, having thrown and gotten uh, hit around a little bit by Concordia Chicago back on Saturday. Came back today, went five innings, gave up three runs, struck out six. Uh, it was uh, Drew Waller who got the win out of the pen to improve to seven and two and uh, Dylan Murrell with the save, his sixth on the season. So Texas Lutheran and UT Tyler, we're gonna bring uh, two teams from Texas uh, all the way up here to uh, play a best of three game series in Wisconsin for the national title. A lot of what we heard all tournament long is, we're really not familiar with that team. Well, we got two teams now that are going to be very familiar with each other. That's right. They played in a three-game series earlier this year. And, of course, uh, you know, you run into each other uh, quite a bit in Texas. Even though, as Coach Burnett mentioned, uh, Texas is a huge state. Uh, you know, San Antonio uh, and Tyler, okay, they're not next door. Nobody's next door to each other in, uh, in Texas. But uh, you still run into each other and have those opportunities to play. Uh, I think it's interesting too, obviously, uh, we are basically guaranteeing that we're going to have a third consecutive champion from the West region. And that's unprecedented. We've never had more than two consecutive champions from the same region. Um, so this really is showing the dominance of the West region in Division Three baseball. Now let's talk about this a little bit, uh, since, since we didn't have two other games to talk about. Let's, uh, you know, talk a little bit more in depth about the West region. This is a region in which, you know, typically the first of all there's only what 25 to 30 some teams out uh, we're talking about texas we're talking about the asc the scac the skyac and the northwest conference and that's about it that's not a ton of of schools as you can understand um and often they are clumped together in one regional in the west regional which is often a six-team regional they all battle each other and you know only one team gets to emerge this year and i, I think we pulled it out and made note of this when we did our regional preview UT Tyler was sent to the Central Regional, which gave them an opportunity to come out where they had not been to the World Series before, gave uh, the West Region a chance to get two teams here, and in fact, ended up in Texas getting two teams here. Um, it, was, it was a good opportunity to sit there and showcase some of the good work that's done out in the West Region. Um, yes, they don't get a chance to sit there and see a lot of teams. And you know there's some tough baseball going on because when um, the Swarthmore coach was talking about going out to Northwest and toughing up his team, he could, if he wanted to toughen up his team, he might have chose um, playing games against um, NJAC. But no, he went out to the Northwest Conference and um, lost some games out there, but his team came back so much better. I think one of our poll questions on the website uh, for Tuesday should be, which game will Malinovich pitch in? Will he? Nathan, the new kid that had a great start in the first game of the series, and they have been so careful with him all year. Uh, it's going to be real interesting to see where he comes in. Um, you know that um, Texas Lutheran is thinking, we got to win two. And I think if Texas Lutheran wins the first one, they might give um, him a second day to rest and play him in the third game if that comes up. Why not? If you got one game in hand, throw somebody and hope they win. If you win, you got a national championship. If you don't win, then you got your ace sitting on a mound. And for me, that's the way to go. Yeah, if he didn't pitch on Tuesday and they had a game on Wednesday and they needed him, he'd be coming in on four days rest, which for you know, for those of us who follow uh, professional baseball, that's fairly normal. But uh, in this case, they've been working him on six to seven days all year. Uh, obviously, you know, all the pitching staffs will be kind of patchwork at this point. Teams will be playing a doubleheader tomorrow. We could have a national champion decided by about 7 p.m., let's say, on uh, Tuesday night or we could be waiting for a game three. If the game three is necessary, it will be at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time on Wednesday. So those first two games on Tuesday will be at 11 o'clock and then, you know, uh, about 40 minutes following. And so if you, want, if you have the ability to sit there and watch, these are gonna be some pretty good games to watch. 
because you know they're going to be competitive, you know they know each other and they have some familiarity. Um, they've got the game plans planned so that they're going to win, and they, they will be close. So keep an eye out for that. All the coverage you can find on D3Baseball.com. For Jim Dixon, I'm Pat Coleman, signing off for Monday afternoon in Grand Chute, Wisconsin.